Will this axe actually chop a pizza? What else can we cut with this thing? And find out what happened when I tried using this gadget on an egg. The first package arrived like this, tightly wrapped in bubble wrap. So I cut into it and opened up these really cool pizza cutting axes. They look great and they came as a pair, one black one and one red. It feels nice and portable, easy to handle and it's a decent size. The head's made out of plastic and the cutting disc is stainless steel. I think the handle's made out of bamboo and you can see unfortunately this one's got a crack running down the middle. It's only on the surface though, so I don't think it's going to be an issue. Well, it looks cool, so let's give it a go. So I guess we're going to chop down into the pizza, then roll back the wheel to cut right through. I can't wait to try this. So I cooked a couple of pizzas, then pulled one out onto this chopping board so we can give it a try. I took a nice firm hold of the axe and aimed for the crust. Then wheel it back. And if I give it a quick little test, you can see it has cut through. That's a nice clean cut, but I'm going to put it back together so I can finish slicing it. Man, that really is satisfying. I wonder what else I could cut with this. There doesn't seem to be any issues at all cutting right the way through. I'm going to try it again with this pizza. And yeah, it seems to be cutting through like butter. If you needed to, you can put quite a bit of downwards pressure onto the blade. Mmm, pizza. Both of these pizzas only had a thin base though, and it may be a bit more challenging if you're trying it with a deep pan. Next I'm going to have a look at this thing, Quick Stick Snack Slicer. I'm chopping off the ties that hold it onto the packaging, and here's the unit. You can see there's this sort of cross plunger on the top, and it looks like a blade halfway up. I thought this would push in, but it doesn't move down at all. Oh I see, it slides out to the top. And you can also lift out this insert. You need to line the plunger up with the guides, and then I think you just push things through. To start with, I thought I'd test it with some mushrooms. So I placed one down inside of the unit, do be careful not to touch the blades, then put the plunger on, and push it down through. I'm doing this one slowly and pushing it out into my hand. And there we go, it's quartered this mushroom pretty much perfectly. I'm running a couple more through, and yeah, it's super easy. I do like the way the blade's concealed, and if you had to do a lot of mushrooms like this, it does make it easy and it's nice and safe. But let's see how well it works with tomatoes. I'm taking one of these, dropping it down into the gadget, and giving it a smack. Again, that has cut it really well, the only issue I can see is that one of the quarters has leaked out some seeds. I tried again with another one, and yeah, it cut it again, but this time it did squash out even more seeds. You can also use it with long stuff, like carrots. To keep it lined up centrally, I'm going to reinstall this flexible insert. The idea is with this, it should hold things in line as we push them through. I started by pushing the carrot by hand, and you can see it is going through pretty much in the middle. Then I'm using the plunger to finish it off. I did notice, however, it was getting quite tough, and then I realised the plunger hadn't actually lined up with the guides. You do need to be careful with this, otherwise it'll jam up. So I pulled it back out, made sure all four were in line, then pushed it on through. Oh dear, one of them fired off. There we go. Well, take a look at that. That has actually worked really well. I'm impressed. I'll try it out next with a piece of this celery. For this one, you can kind of just push it in from the top and then pull it through from the bottom. That's super easy. You can see it has actually worked really well, but because of the odd shape of the celery, we do get some variation in the size of the cuts. But next I'm going to try it with this cucumber. I'm removing the insert for this one, then taking a firm grip and pushing it through from the top. Whoa, check that out. Pretty cool, huh? I pushed it through a little bit more, then pulled it through from the other side. And there we go. That does seem to have worked really well. I guess you could use a knife to cut them now if you wanted them in shorter sticks. If we look at them from the end, yeah, check that out. Really neatly cut cucumber quarters. <laughs> That's great. Next I'm going to try out this. It's called a Loose Leaf Plus. It's a greens and herbs stripper. Let's see if it's any good. So I cut off the ties and removed it from the packaging, and it does look like quite a cool gadget. It's got a series of different sized holes for different sized stalks. And if I flick the safety catch at the back, it opens up the drawer and reveals the cutting blade. It's spring loaded and it works kind of like a pair of scissors. It feels nice and sharp and I'll try them out in a minute. I put the safety lock back on. Oh, it kind of slipped. That's weird, the safety lock still looks on, but the blades have kind of opened. And with a closer look, you can see it's not a very tight tolerance. The safety catch has opened out, and the top blade has slipped down behind it. The rivet holding the safety catch mechanism has got a lot of play in it. I don't know if that's just my model here, maybe I've been unlucky. Have you got one of these? Is yours the same? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, to start with, I'm going to use it to cut off some of this thyme. And some parsley. And let's see how well it can strip off the leaves. 
because of the broken safety catch, I do need to hold it carefully here. I started by putting a piece of parsley through this hole, I pulled it through, and oh it just snapped off at the bottom. So I held it right to the top and snapped it off there. Well, I mean, yeah it's worked, but it's a bit of a cumbersome tool. I'll try again though. This time I'm putting two stalks through and I'm using a bigger hole. Hold it underneath the top and, well, yeah, I mean it snapped it off, but I could kind of do it a lot easier and quicker by just doing it with my hands. Maybe parsley isn't the best thing to try it with, so let's try it with a thyme. This has got loads of little leaves and it would be great if it could cleanly strip them all off the stems. I lined it up with this hole, then started pulling it through. And it's kind of working. Haha, <laughs> there we go, it snapped. And now it's jammed up and I can't pull the rest through. So we've got a few leaves there, and I don't really know what I'm supposed to do with this. I mean, thread it back through? Oh, this seems stupid. Yeah, I, I got one. Just about pulling that one through. <laughs> oh, it's all gone through, and that's the smallest hole too. Well, yeah, it seems like a complete waste of time. I'll try it again with this one though. So I line it up, and give it a gentle pull through. And it's done most of it to be fair, yeah, pretty well. It snapped the rest of it off, but yeah, there's a few clean leaves there. So I guess if you really wanted to bother, it does kind of work. I've got to be honest though, you can kind of just do the same thing by pulling it through your fingers. Yeah, it's snapped off there where the stem gets thin, same as it did with the gadget, but it's so much easier. So I don't think I'm going to be using this gadget for thyme or parsley. Would you even bother removing the leaves from the stem? Let me know in the comments. But I am going to try it out with something a bit thicker, like this rosemary. I'm trying out the cutting function first, and it cut through that one well, and that one, oh hang on a minute, the rosemary's actually got stuck in between the two blades. The stem has lodged up in between there, I have to pull it apart to release it, and with a closer look you can actually see there's loads of play in between the two blades. It seems to be one thing after another with this gadget, I'm really not impressed. But do let me know if yours is any better, maybe I've just been unlucky and I bought a faulty one. Anyway, let's see how well it strips off the leaves. I'm threading it through this hole, then pulling it through. And because the stalk of the rosemary is so much tougher, that's actually worked pretty well, look at that, it's quite pretty. You can pull it off the tool and it has shredded most of the leaves pretty well. Not quite at the top though, but again I can pretty much do exactly the same thing just using my hands. So there we go, let me know your thoughts in the comments. And I'm not really sure what we'd use the bigger holes for. Another issue I found was, even with the safety catch engaged, it does knock off very easily. That could be dangerous, I even found just placing it down could disengage it. So I really wouldn't want to rely on it if I was just placing it into a drawer or something. Next I'm going to look at this egg topper. It's quite an intriguing looking thing, so I opened it up and took it out of the pack. Well, look at that, it looks kind of cool. This yellow silicon stopper pushes out from the centre and there's some vicious looking stainless steel teeth. I'm not really sure if I'm supposed to leave that in to use it, am I? So I had another look at the packaging and I can see it's actually a little egg cup stand. Ah, oh, that makes sense, there's not really any instructions. There we go, egg topper and yellow holder nest together. It is quite neat that, but I'm not really sure I'd use this as an egg cup much. Anyway, I took a couple of large eggs and placed them in some simmering water for 4 minutes to soft boil them. Then I'm going to try out the gadget. Well, the egg does sit nicely on the holder. Then I took the tool, placed it on the top and gave it a squeeze. Oh man, it smashed it to bits. And not only that, but it squirted hot egg yolk all over my hand. I've been pretty lucky there, it is very hot and sticky, but it hasn't actually burnt me. That could have been painful. I washed it off my hand, and let's have a closer look. You can see where it's tried to cut through the top, and I'm sure it was my bad technique that made the egg explode like that. Maybe I was pushing down or something. What a shame, that's really not a very good outcome. But I washed off the gadget, and I am going to give it another go. This time for safety I'm keeping both hands above the egg as I squeeze. And well actually look at that, it does seem to have worked quite well. Take the top out of the gadget, and well yeah, it's cut that really nicely. There's no eggshell fallen down inside, and it's quite a clean cut. I'm transferring it onto a plate, and enjoying it with toast. Ha oh, look at that. What a good consistency, and it's nice that there's no eggshell falling down inside. If you like eggs, you might like to check out one of my recent videos where I look at this alternative egg topper and some other fun gadgets like this really cool timer. Or you might like to check out this other video which you can see by clicking the links. Have fun, stay safe, and as always, thanks for watching.